All right, let's go on to the next one. Here's our double dip. Let's put it on there. And see what our and here we have it's climbing. It looks like it's it's hard to tell whether or when it wants to stop in it. Well, it looks like it's about one fourteen. Alright. First test with the double dip and we get yes, two point three. So the double dip puts out twice as much power approximately. At least it did on the on the first one. We'll see if that continues on. I think our second run with the single dip was uh, 1.8 or 2. Point something. I'll turn that off and let it uh, let it recharge and then be back. Okay, we're back up to 1.2 volts and let's uh, let's discharge it again and uh, see what we got. So there's uh, 1.52 and 200 milliamps. And let's see what we get this time. 3.2. So, went up again, and this time we're at 1.5, and we went to 3.2, okay? So, it looks like to me, just from the, so far, that as we fill up that carbon felt, we're going to get more amps out of it, and that makes sense. So it's climbing back up. I'll be back when it's back up to 120 again. Okay, we're back to 1.15 again. So we'll uh, discharge it again and see what we get this time. It's, okay, 1.55 actually. Had trouble getting that video camera to come back on. Alright, let's see what we got on our discharge this time. There we go. Six, six right even, wasn't it? All right. I'll record that, and I'll be back for the next one. All right, back again. Around 1.15 again. 1.49. There we go. Let's see what we get this time. Last time was six milliamps. Oh, whoop, ten. All right, ten milliamps that time. So you see, it's doing exactly the same thing. It's just at a, a higher level than it was. At slightly lower voltage too. So looks like uh, it's the same. I'm going to do a slightly something different now. I'll be back. All right, I'm back again. Now this time uh, we're going to change it around. I've got a. This is another piece of carbon felt that I've dipped one time, but I haven't added any borax to it, and I also haven't added any of the uh, zinc uh, chloride carbon that I made. So uh, this is just a straight one dip with a mix of a mix of uh, graphite and titanium dioxide. Now it's dry, so I'm going to have to. Uh, moisten that up before it's going to work. But um, what we're going to do with this is a variation of what we did in the magnesium battery. And the first magnesium uh, experiment, we we used uh, uh, just a piece of uh, towel 
paper towel as a separator <coughs> and uh, and then and of course our half reactions all bled together and we got uh, we got 1.87 volts and uh, 20 milliamps I think but in the second magnesium experiment um, I used a piece of uh, typing paper which did, doesn't bleed through dipped in uh, borax and with just the carbon or the graphite on one side and titanium on the other side and we got some really nice uh, amps out of it. It climbed up to 83 amps. So um, that seems to be the very best that we've got is just keep it really simple and with the, and the borax linking the half cells together and it, so if I want to do that experiment except use the carbon felt on one side, add that in there um, and that's going to allow a lot of oxygen in that so we're going to see how that goes. So of course the electrodes are going to be further apart so that's going to drop our um, amps down so uh, let's, let's do that so I've got a clean piece of uh, graph oil there with with our uh, copper on the back of it and I'm just going to paint a little graphite and water on that and then here's our borax typing paper separator put that right there okay and then this I'm going to have to uh, I'm just going to put more titanium dioxide and water on that to, to moisten it up some Just still some code a little bit more there. All right, now let's see what we got. But I shorted it out before we started. <laughs> and it on the other setting. Yeah. It's not very wet anyway. So I don't think it's going to produce very much. Oh, there's 3.46. Look at this climbing actually. Look at that. Let's just let it climb up. So that's interesting, isn't it? Still climbing. Well, it's been a 30 second dead short and we're up to 9 milliamps. Still climbing. cut some more stuff out of this. Look at there, 10 milliamps on the dead short and climbed from what, 2 or something? And still climbing on steady, pretty steady rate. 12 milliamps. I don't know when this will stop, but we're eating up our time real fast.
Let's stop right there and check the self charge on it. See where that's going. Huh. Huh? Doesn't appear to change much, does it? back whenever that stopped. Let's see what it stops at. Alright. It looks like after all that abuse that it's uh, it's only going to climb back to uh, on one, what's that, 99.7 or 1. Looks like it's stabilized right there. So let's uh, short it out again and see what it does. Huh. So this time it's just putting out a steady 1.6 so we did something to it last time I don't know what but something inside that cell has changed because it doesn't uh, put out all that amps there for a little a while on that short and then nothing. And I can't see any difference. Plate's still shining. Nothing bled through. Just starting to there maybe. Maybe that was it. It finally bled through a little bit. It's the only possibility I see. So, anyway, thanks for watching. All right, I'm back one more time. Baca wanted me to throw some heat on one of the cells here and see if it increases the voltage. So we're going to do that real quick. All right, there's a, a voltage. Here's some heat. Doesn't look like it increased. Well, a little bit, maybe. Nope. Yeah, a little bit. So there you go, Baca. It does. I think it absorbs the most of the heat, though, when it's charging. And this was already charged up, but you can see that it still went up a little bit. All right. Thanks for watching. Well, the carbon felt still looks uh, promising. We got roughly uh, double the power out of a double dip as we did out of a single dip. We also had some interesting results using the carbon felt on the anode side with a uh, borax separator. Although I'm going to have to rerun uh, that experiment again and uh, dip the felt in some water before I do it. We also got some surprising results from using just a borax separator uh, with the titanium dioxide and uh, graphite on either side with the zinc. Um, I didn't bother to show you the subsequent uh, cycles on that because uh, they were basically the same as the, the first cycle, uh, 50 milliamps every time. Uh, so uh, that pretty much says that the, uh, the magnesium oxide was, re was responsible for the increases in the last uh, magnesium test and uh, I'd also that shows that the magnesium oxide built up too much and then slowly killed that one too. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.